Good afternoon. I work in the drone industry. And when I tell people that, I typically get one of two reactions. People think about the toys that, if you were to believe the newspapers, are being used by peeping toms to spy on their neighbours. Or they think about the weapons systems being used in Iraq and Afghanistan. But in reality, there is a middle ground between those two extremes, a growing movement to use drones for commercial purposes. And the number of industry sectors that they have the opportunity to revolutionise is quite impressive. So construction, agriculture, surveying, for humanitarian purposes, people are talking about flying bloodstocks into hospitals or vaccines into remote locations. Apparently, we'll even be able to use them to deliver books. And the adoption of drones is going to be prolific. So in North America, the Federal Aviation Authority, the FAA, are forecasting that they will be sold two and a half million drones this year. By 2020, that increases to seven million drones, 40% of which are for commercial purposes. Give you an indication of cost of that, commercial drone is going to cost you somewhere between five and $50,000. That's tens of billions of dollars being sent, spent just in the US on people building new businesses. Now, drones are going to get more capable. As battery technology gets better, the range of drones increases, and the payloads they can carry get better. Sensor packages are getting more sophisticated and lighter. And drones are already capable of being pre-programmed with routes that they should fly. And it will not be very long before drones become fully autonomous vehicles. They can take off, fly to a location, perform a sophisticated mission, fly back again, land, recharge themselves, wait to go out again. But at the moment, you are not allowed to fly a drone more than 500 metres or so from the operator. The technical term is beyond visual line of sight. The operator must keep their eyes on the drone at any one point in time. And the reason for that is the operator is there to perform uh, separation assurance, which basically means the drone does not become one with the ground or one with another aeroplane or crashes into a building, etc. Because drones, whilst they're capable, do not have an awareness of the environment that they are flying in. And this is where Altitude Angel comes in. We are building cloud-based services to give situational awareness to drones and build a global autonomous air traffic control system for drones. Now, there's quite a few steps we need to go through to be able to build that system, and the first of which is to be able to ingest and understand through machine learning very complicated and numerous data sets. So we ingest worldwide terrain data, a model of what the planet looks like, environmental data around the weather, the world's airspace rules, where, where you can fly, where you can't fly, regulations on a worldwide basis, information on ground hazards, power pylons, tall buildings, etc. Now, the Royal Air Force taught me to fly. I am what the FAA refers to as a trained aviator. Most drone operators are not trained aviators, so they don't know how to read aviation charts. They don't know where they can fly, and they don't know where they shouldn't. So at the moment, we take all our situational data and we put it on a web-based map for operators to come and look at in an easy-to-consume and format that they understand. We also make that data available through a set of quite sophisticated APIs so other people building software or other applications can build on top of us. And we're talking to manufacturers to build these services into the drones. So when the drone is turned on, it can talk to us Tell us its location, and we can say, no, you are inside Heathrow's air traffic control zone. You cannot fly, and the drone will not fly. These services are also going to be enhanced by command and control services. So once we've got that data, we need to be able to send information down to the drone and give it instructions so we can perform tasks like collision avoidance, there's a lot of talk within the drone industry about using a technology called sense and avoid, where the drones can sense other hazards and avoid it. That's great for things that are short range, but realistically, it's very much a last-ditch measure. If we can give warning of a collision several miles out and be able to move one drone up a few metres and another drone down a few other metres, it means that they are able to do the most efficient routes and don't come out of a potential near-miss flying in opposite directions. 
we have a very capable team building these services where we have experience of people that have built and operated software as a service businesses. And we have people that um, have got an engineering background capable of building these kind of technologies that need to be able to run 24 by 7 globally and with a significant message volume. After this session, I'd love to talk to anyone here that has a drone project or is involved in drone projects. I'd also love to talk to anyone that would like to be involved in our Series A round. Drones are here to stay. Altitude Angel is going to put them to work and put them to work safely and do that for everybody. Thank you very much.